Okay, today we're gonna compile BusyBox for ARM, but on our desktop computer, so we're gonna cross compile. Uh, so we're gonna need a cross compiler. Let's use GCC ARM Linux. Uh, so let's go ahead, sudo apt install that. There's a link in the description of this video to all these notes, so you can copy and paste from there. There's gonna be other dependencies, but we are going to use uh, apt source. So I did a video on this recently. If we go into, so sudo vim apt, or etc apt, source list, you can see that I have enabled source repositories. I went over this in a previous video, but you just need to uncomment if it's already commented uh, out, if you have this in there. If not, just copy and paste uh, deb source, uh, the repository you want to use, and you can just go main, or if you're running a specific version of Debian, you can put that in there, like I'm using SID. Uh, so once you do that, you can then install an application, sudo apt install apt-src and that will download uh, an app and install apt src, which will allow us to pull down the BusyBox uh, source code files from the Debian repositories. Now, you can go and get the BusyBox code from the busybox.net website. They also have some binaries there, but they tend to be pretty old, especially for ARM. Uh, but what we can do here is we can say app source install busybox and currently I'm in an empty directory that will download the source code to the current directory but also pull down any dependencies we need. It may ask you for a password if it needs to pull down any files for compiling it. Now if I wanted to build it for my system right now I can run the same command but instead of install I can say build and that will compile the binaries and create a deb file for me that I can use to install but I want to cross compile it so we're going to use that compiler that we installed and what we're going to do is we'll move into the directory or of the code we just downloaded so here's the busy box code and we're going to use make for this so we're going to say first we're going to set up some configuration we're going to say use make we're going to use an architecture of arm we're going to cross compile using that arm linux gnu uh, compiler that we installed and we're going to do def config so we're going to do that we'll take a moment it's just going to generate some files for us here uh, once that is generated there is a hidden file dot config so if we were to cat out dot config, you can see some options here. There's an option that we want to apply into there. So you can use a text editor or you can just append it using echo. We're going to say config static dash y. What that's going to do is it's going to make sure that when we compile it, it makes a static binary. Uh, so there's no dependency. So it's a single binary file and it's not linked to anything. It's going to make it a lot easier for us to copy it over to our Android device or our modems or our TVs or whatever. ARM Linux device that we want to copy it to and not have to worry about linking it to stuff. Okay, so now we are going to compile it. Uh, and this is the command for compiling. We're going to say make. Again, we're going to say ARM. We're going to use the ARM Linux compiler. And then dash J will allow us to use more than one core. Now, I currently have four cores on my CPU, uh, but you may have more. You may have less. Uh, and what you can do is you can run the command NPROC and that will just output uh, the number of cores you have. So at this point it's going to use the max number of cores. For me it's going to be four and it should just take a moment to compile or a minute or two. And again, if you don't know what BusyBox is, maybe I should have mentioned this at the beginning of the video. Uh, I've mentioned it many times. It's on many, many devices if you have a <clears throat> TV even if it's not a smart TV, it's probably running Linux and it probably has a copy of BusyBox on there. Your phone probably has BusyBox or in some cases ToyBox, which is not as good in my opinion. Uh, but basically it's a single binary that has almost all the core tools that you will ever use. Um, you know, grep, awk, sed, dd, uh, it even has a built-in shell. And lots of times they're compiled for these ARM devices, but they don't have to be compiled with all those tools, so they might be stripped down. So what's nice about compiling your own is that you can compile it with all those tools. And you can have a web server, uh, FTP server, a Telnet server. Uh, I know those aren't the securest because they're not encrypted, but there are options there for you. Uh, and there's, there's, there's many, many tools that we can build in here. And we're just building them all in here by default. And at that point, you can copy BusyBox to your device and and have all these tools for writing your scripts, right? Uh, and that's what we're doing right now. But we're compiling it on a desktop and we're compiling it for ARM. So now, if I list out files in the directory here, you can see there is a BusyBox right here. 
and if I say file and give it the name, it'll tell me what type of file it is. You can see here that it's a 32-bit executable for an ARM processor. It's statically linked and it's for a Linux system. And that is it. You just copy that binary to your device, put it where you're gonna run it, and you have all those tools. And to show you BusyBox on my system, these are the tools that you will now have on your whatever device, as long as you have room. And again, if BusyBox, it has all these tools. If it doesn't have Vim, but it has Vi, so at least you have a text editor, it has Watch, Watchdog, WC, WGET, Which, Who, Who Am I. Uh, it, you can compress files, uncompress files. Um, and if we list out the file we just compiled, which has all those built in, you can see it's two megabytes which is actually kind of big, like I said, last time you see BusyBox, it's close to a megabyte or maybe even smaller. And that's because they strip them down and you don't have all the tools. But if you want all those tools on those devices, you just compile it on your desktop. Of course you compile it on the device too, but then you have to get all the dependencies and compilers on there. Um, and BusyBox, again, you can get some binaries from the official website, but they tend to be pretty old. You can get them other places, but if you don't know who compiled them, you know, they, they can, there could be malicious code in there. So pulling down the source code from the Debian repositories and building it this way, as you saw, was super simple. If you check out the link in the description, I have all the notes on the stuff we just did, as well as some notes on pushing it to your Android device. And that is it. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, keep on watching. Like, share, subscribe. Check out my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. There's a link there. There's also a link on my website. Again, filmsitechris.com, Chris with a K, uh, to a place where you can support me that way. You can support me with PayPal or LibrePay. And if you can't support me financially, again, liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, all helps. And I hope that you have a great day.